Thank you, Madam Chair, <clears throat> and thank you, Senator Inhofe, and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to provide comments. My name is Richard Glenn, and I'm the board president of the Barrow Arctic Science Consortium. This is an organization dedicated to bringing visiting researchers together with Arctic residents. <coughs> I'm an officer of the Arctic Slope Regional Corporation, which is a corporation for the native people of Alaska's North Slope, and I'm here today as an Alaskan resident who studies sea ice, as a subsistence hunter, a whaling crew co-captain, and a geologist. This issue is very important to me. I have only five minutes, and my oral comments will summarize the most important points of my more detailed written testimony. I've studied sea ice for university-level work and have assisted many others in the sea ice environment. We Inupiaq hunters hunt on the ice each year, and our lives depend and the safety of our people depend on our knowledge of changing ice conditions. Along with many of our people, I'm concerned about changing sea ice conditions. However, I question whether the loss of multi-year sea ice equals the loss of polar bear habitat. The most prominent point made by the Fish and Wildlife Service is about receding multi-year sea ice cover and its equivalence to the loss of polar bear habitat. There's little mention of the marginal ice zone that area of, of ice that freezes and melts within a given year mixed with open water and older ice. And it's in this area that grows at the expense of the loss of multi-year ice. The polar bear does not live only on the multi-year ice pack. Polar bears thrive in many settings. In late spring, polar bears come to the near shore landfast ice to hunt newborn seal pups located in dens beneath snowdrifts. In summer, we observe polar bears hunting further offshore in the marginal ice zone. Other polar bears will stay on the coast, not trapped there by the absence of sea ice, but to feed on living or dead animals along the shoreline. Groups of bears have even been seen by our villagers establishing an overwintering circle around a carcass, such as a dead gray whale. My point is none of the above hunting environments is on the multi-year ice pack. There is a year-long and varied cycle of habitats for polar bears. It's wrong to ignore them and focus only on how far the ice has receded. To do so is to ignore the polar bear's use of other habitats. Even the Fish and Wildlife Service study acknowledges that the increase of marginal ice cover may be beneficial for ice seals and polar bears. The proposed listing is not based on polar bear population levels or trends. There's not enough observational data for a listing. Polar bears are hard to count, and ice conditions are not so easy to predict from models or satellites. The proposed rule correlates that a decline of sea ice cover with a, a decline of ring seals. The data is insufficient to support even this conclusion. Right now in the Chukchi Sea, the satellites will tell you that our ocean is covered with new young ice and not the multi-year ice pack. Nevertheless, our hunters are reporting abundant and healthy ring seals, as well as polar bears. There are many international mechanisms set up to conserve and protect the polar bear. In moving to the Endangered Species Act, let us not ignore those, such as the Marine Mammal Protection Act. If we really want to protect the species, let's do something about poaching, poaching by other countries. Alaskan Inupiat people annually take about 45 to 50 bears from the Chukchi Sea stock. Yet the same stock is suffering from poaching on the Russian side with catch numbers around 200 per year. Our traditional knowledge is built upon thousands of years of experience in the Arctic environment. I encourage Congress to use our experience and science before taking action to list the polar bears threatened. This is common sense and required by law. Thank you. Do you have, you have more time if you want to go on? Oh, I heard a buzzer. I thought you were... No, no, not at all. You have another 45 seconds. Go right ahead. A threatened listing for the Ignore polar bear, this. Madam Chair, will do little to aid the polar bear's existence. It will not create more sea ice cover. It will not change their ability to locate dens or prey, but it will disproportionately affect the lives of Inupiat Eskimos who live along the Arctic <coughs> coast. While America sleeps better at night, falsely believing they have assisted this iconic species, they will still fly planes, drive cars, and power their homes. We are very concerned about changes in climate conditions in the Arctic and have more reason than others to be aggressive. The proper methods to adjust 
address those issues are to deal with climate change causes directly and not twist the Endangered Species Act listing of the polar bear into action directed at climate change. Thank you. Thank you, sir.